Hi, I'm Carly Fairbrother. I'm the host of The Last Grown Up in the Woods, and I have just moved. Apart from trying to find a place to sit in my new house that doesn't put lines across my face when I'm filming like that one right there, I um, am looking through my books, which I love. It's like finding old friends that I'm like, oh, you, plant technology. I haven't uh, read you yet, but I should because you look really interesting. So I like put some of these in them on my mental shelf in my head to read later. Once in a while you come across a book like this one. It's called The Lost Whole Moose Catalog with, with the subtitle A Yukon Way of Knowledge. It says here, don't let your children read this book. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't read this book. Just put it down and run out of the store screaming. Ah! So it's kind of like a little homesteader bush person thing. Okay, but the reason that I am actually filming this, you see I have all of these rose hips. Oh, well, there's something to do with rose hips in here. Horse tail rose rose hips! Found them. One set of rose hips will make three pots of tea, but I don't really like rose hip tea. Oh, if you throw a handful of rose hips into the fire, it mellows them out and sort of takes the obnoxious green taste away. There's some advice. That's not the one I'm looking for though. Oh, Press rose hips together with honey if you wish and let them dry to form nutritious candy bars packed with you with all that lovely vitamin C. It says that if you leave the seeds in, you'll get more vitamin E. Okay, let's just go mash some rose hips. I'm going to mash them using the high tech fork. So a good thing to note about rose hips is that they'll stay on the branches well on to the winter, which is um, really important if you are um, you know, in the woods around winter and hungry, especially if you need vitamin C. The seeds are still there. I can maybe tolerate the seeds. Oi! I, <coughs> I think I'm choking on a rose hip seed. Once again, as per um, my life, I have failed to read the proper instruction when I was telling me to leave the seeds in. It was saying that I should dry them, then powder them. If I was just going to puree them, I should cut them in half and take the seeds out, which seems like a whole lot of work to me. I'm going to take that lovely mash I have and... <coughs> I need some water. Okay. Put it in the dehydrator, then grind it up, and then I'll put it in smoothies or cereal or whatnot. That's my plan. To make up for my lack of research to start with, I'm turning to my favorite book, the Boreal Herbal. It says here that the seed hairs of the rose hips can cause throat irritation and not to eat too many whole. So that that would explain why I feel like I need more water. Hi, welcome to the magical place of two days later. It took forever to dry this stuff out. It's still kind of um sticky. I blame that on the honey. We're gonna put this in my coffee grinder. The seeds are still there, but I could probably shake them out somehow. Okay, let's do it a bit longer. Look at that. The stuff in the lid's a fine pulverized powder. This is actually delicious. The rest of it has a ways to go. So about 15 minutes of picking rose hips will lead to about this much powder. I wish I wish I could share smells with you. I think I actually would do it this way again. It was kind of suggested to dry out the berries first and then grind them into a powder. But this way I actually got the honey ground in there and so I can just throw this into um, various stuff. I'm eating it on unsweetened yogurt to prove that it's delicious. A little bit of this and mix it up. Rose hip yogurt. There you have it, the last grown up in the woods, failing to follow instructions since 1985. If you want to watch more videos of me failing to follow instructions, then click that link right there and subscribe. And also, let me know if there's anything that you like to do with your rose hips. Thanks for watching and happy foraging and dance party. This is what I do when I have cooking success.